Live from the Hollywood Improv, it's the Nighttime Show! With us, as always, our head writer, Matt Walker. I'm the voice of the Nighttime Show, Mike Black. We have a very special guest, star of Big Bang Theory, Law and & Order, and Kevin on Kevin Can Fuck Himself, right now on AMC, Eric Peterson! And now our host, if he rolls a 12 dexterity, he can continue hosting the show for all eternity, Stephen Kramer Glickman! Yeah! Nice job, Mike Black. Very nice. Good to have you back. Uh, Proud to be here. We're we're (laughs) so excited. This is so wonderful. Eric... Uh, thank you for being here, man. I'm so happy to be here, Glickman. Oh, Very happy. Dude, I got it. We got to talk about the show. Kevin Can Fuck Himself is just, holy shit. Um, for, for those of you who have not seen the show, I'm just going to give a little brief sure. of, of what it is. Sure. Um, uh, you play Kevin on I the do. show. The show feels like you're watching um, King of Queens, basically, or like a, a show like that. Like a right? CBS sitcom. CBS yeah. sitcom. Yeah. It's written just like a CBS sitcom. It has all the laugh tracks, all the moments. But then when the wife walks out of the room, and, and when like the the husband makes like a funny you know you know sitcommy joke, and she's like, "I'll go get the pizza rolls." She walks into the kitchen. The camera goes with her. We it goes to single camera, and it looks like Breaking Bad. Totally. And her life is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and you get to see what it's like being the wife of this fucking guy that like everyone <laughs> thinks is so great. And she, it's like it's like what Deborah's life was really like on Everyone Loves Raymond. Exactly. Like it's just. <laughs> Just so fucking brutal, and she just wants to kill her husband or divorce him or get the <laughs> fuck out. And and um, and I, I mean, immediately when you watch it, you're like, "How has no one ever done this before?" It's yeah. genius. It really is. It. I mean, it makes sense that it's on AMC. AMC is the only place that would take a chance and do something like yeah, this. Yeah, it, it, it is shocking. I thought the same thing when I read it and when I, I heard the initial idea. I was like. How has no one thought of this before? Because it does. Yeah. As soon as you hear it, you're like, of course. Of course we should be exploring that. And, and this is a great way to do it with the two like very familiar now for a sort of more cultured theater, or, I mean, a television audience. Like who knows? I would say most people nowadays, if you said multicam versus single cam, a lot of non-industry people would know what that means. Right. Because <laughs> we've been conditioned over the years of like, oh, there was what multicam was, and now we're in the like the golden age of television, and we know what that feels like. And so the combining of the two really is is very brilliant. Our our creator Valerie Armstrong. She has kind of a cool story how the show came to be. Please, please tell us. In, in that she was, uh, not that she had no credits, but she was a writer's assistant maybe two years ago. I mean, like, really ha- had not. It's not like wow. she had a ton of stuff. She'd written on um, Lodge uh, 39, 49, whatever that that was on AMC as well. Uh, she was a writer's assistant on that. She wrote on uh, a SEAL Team 6, one of the like mm-hmm. CBS kind of procedurals for like one season, but really did not have a ton of credits. She was a part of AMC had like a writer's room project sort of thing for up and coming writers to pitch ideas. She pitched this idea and they were like, not only do we want to buy it, but we're buying it to series like right now, go wow. make it. Like wow. it was such a, they were like, of course, this is brilliant. So <laughs> it was great. And you know, that I think that that sort of made the whole vibe on set because it was a big first thing for Valerie. And because it was, in a way, sort of its own, the first of its kind of this type of a show, everybody felt like, let's just all be cool and try to make a really smart thing. And uh, and we're all very, very proud of it. Now, so your wife that's on the show, yes, um, uh, she is uh, one of the lead stars of Shit's Creek. Yes, Annie yeah. Murphy. Annie Murphy. Emmy yeah. winner, Annie yeah. Murphy. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. won she won the Emmy literally the night before we started shooting. Wow. Whoa. wow. Yeah. No she pressure for you. <laughs> yeah. That's at the next day. Yeah. So <laughs> they, did you do any baller moves when she came in like I know, we, smack you in the face? Well we wanted her to like bring the Emmy and like slam <laughs> it down. But um, <laughs> no it was actually here's a funny story. When we we shot the show in Boston because it takes place in Boston and we shoot we shoot a lot of it on the sound stage really because of COVID, the original idea was to do more of it in the community um, but obviously for reasons that yeah. we shoot most of it on the soundstage but we do shoot some exteriors uh, out in and about you know Boston and the surrounding areas and also they a lot of the smaller bit parts were local Boston actors which I think they really wanted to have that flavor of Boston it's a big part of the show um, yeah. so because we were shooting in Boston and most of us live in LA we all had to get to Boston and, and this was in 
uh, shoot, September of oh. 2020. So this was like oh. in the thick of the pandemic, yeah. right? Wow. And so most of our cast flew, but I have uh, a wife and two kids, and we were kind of like, I don't know that we really want to get on a plane right now. So we rented an RV and drove from L.A. to Boston over two weeks. Wow. It was spectacular. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and one of the things that we were going to do, uh, the plan was, and Annie was like all about it, is we were going to pick up Annie at – the Canada border because she lives in Toronto. Uh-huh. And so we were going to Niagara Falls and there's a thing called the Rainbow Bridge. It's d- the, yeah. the bridge from yeah. Canada to America. And we're like, we'll just pull the RV up to the edge of the Rainbow Bridge and you can just like walk across the border <laughs> and we'll take you to Boston. And we were going to do that and that was the plan. And then uh, uh, Dan Levy sort of rented out a castle for all of the Shit's Creek <laughs> family for yeah. Emmy night. And it was a good thing because they all won yeah. that night and it was yeah. very exciting. So she was like, I can't take the RV trip because we're we rented a castle and, <laughs> <laughs> and it's wow. Emmy night and we're like go do that that'll be fun and then yeah. they all won and it was great what's so. the yeah. weirdest thing you stopped at on your trip across the US um, definitely uh, a dinosaur prince sort of like area in the middle of the like Navajo reservation mm-hmm. in I think Utah is where we were we had just left dinosaur mo- prints like dinosaur tracks oh, okay. like in the like, I, at like first, I thought dinosaur slash Prince the artist. <laughs> that, now that would be like, great. Uh, that I would like to. A dinosaur where is Prince. This? Yeah. yeah, he was the dinosaur <laughs> the prince. prince. <laughs> the Prince of Dinosaurs. Oh, that's prince so good. Of Gonna party dinosaur. like it's 1999 million years. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, it was literally we were driving like on the highway, and we I wanted to do this more, but sadly, I think that. Uh, because we were on the interstates, like you right. just don't see it as much as if you're on like Route 66, yeah. where there are yeah. those like turnoffs of like yeah. world's biggest ball fun. of yarn and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, but we did see one. We were on some highway in Utah, and it said like dinosaur tracks <laughs> one mile, and then we like saw it at the last second, so we had to do a U-turn in the <laughs> RV like on the, on the highway. highway, and we pulled up, and there was literally a couple like little tents with some Navajo mm-hmm. uh, people there that were selling you know little arrowheads and jewelry and mm-hmm. stuff. And then there was like this guy who kind of came out from behind this tent. And he was like, follow me. And then <laughs> we like walked out into this desert, just a big, huge open desert. And right he, after you guys left, they're like, he doesn't work here. Right. <laughs> yeah, <don't follow> <laughs> and he like had a little water bottle that he would spray over like where the tracks were so you could see oh, them, see okay. you know, like more yeah. oh, prominently. And wow. they really looked really cool. I mean, it was like huge paw prints and stuff like That's that. That's awesome. And, and he's like, here's a claw you can see. I have to believe it's real. I'd drive yeah. out just to see that. Yeah, yeah. it was very cool. Very yeah, because cool. I've driven cross country, and I think the weirdest place I ever stopped was in, I think it was in Missouri, mm-hmm. and it was the National Greyhound Racing Hall of Fame and Museum. That's great. Uh, and they had like a 20-foot Greyhound statue in front of the building. I wish I had photos. This is like pre-cell <laughs> phone camera. Thing. Yeah, yeah. This is like late 90s, but uh, that was the strangest place in the U.S. ever. I was like, what? why is this a thing? Like, why does this even exist? <laughs> I remember my parents taking me and my brother to one in like Tennessee once when we were kids that was, they had these huge dinosaurs that were, they didn't even move. They were just like, mm-hmm. You know, structure like yeah. oh, the ones yeah. they in uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Right? Yes, well, that those kind of stuff, right? And yeah. they're like the huge dinosaurs. They're just there. They had speakers playing like, <laughs> yeah, but like they're not moving or anything. Right. And then they'd give you were on a little jeep, and they gave all the kids little Tommy guns, and you would just <laughs> shoot at the dinosaurs. <laughs> oh wow, that's all it was. Yeah. There was a thing I, I I drove across country, and there was a a thing called this. It was called like an apple pie farm, mm-hmm. and <laughs> it was this place they grow pies where, where they had a giant apple structure. This big uh, fake giant apple, <laughs> right. uh-huh. and then uh, there was like a, a hill all around it, and then you could walk up to the apple, and they would sell slices of apple pie or full apple pies at the apple yeah. pie structure. Uh-huh. But then the hill, the little grassy hill that was all around it, was just um, hundreds of rabbits. So there were wow. rabbits running all over this. So it was very now were the Tim children Burton-y. given Tommy guns? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to shoot, shoot the, the rabbits. rabbits. Yes, 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 exactly. It was really weird this though because you're walking like around. You're a like, place I would be very interested in going. I know it was very like Tim Burtony. It felt very. Strange. Were they like clean white rabbits or? They, yeah, they no. were like or of nature rabbits. They were weird. They were weird rabbits, yeah. but they were big. Yeah. I remember there being a lot of big. Any weird Flemish ones. giants? I think so. Oh, I wow. So. I mean, that was a weird thing from when before the internet, when we were all kids, 
there were a lot of like travel destinations had a gigantic version of whatever you were yes. there to yeah. see. <laughs> so you, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, don't pass it by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like Randy's Donuts. I think is, yeah, sure, is yeah. one of the in, last of those in uh, Canada in Montreal, where my family's all from. They they had a place called the Orange Julius, mm-hmm. and Orange yes. Julius had a gigantic like. 40, sto- 40 foot tall orange. Uh, orange. orange. Yeah. In yeah. Front. Well, you, you know, walk Orange Julius was in every mall in the United States. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. But it was the, like a giant orange. That yeah. was the only people. Yeah, yeah we didn't there. have that here in the yeah. States. So, Matt. welcome. Yeah, Matt. We didn't have <laughs> For our podcast, orange. we have a giant Stephen Kramer Glickman here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just so you don't the miss only it. Thing, the only time <laughs> yes. it got better was when the giant, enormous thing, whatever it was, was the actual building. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like, yeah. You were inside of it. Uh, there used to be a place on Melrose, uh, the hamburger that ate LA, that was mm-hmm. shaped like a gigantic hamburger. Sure. And it had like a cityscape next to it that it was chewing yeah. on. <laughs> sure. And, and there was like the brown derby, it. right? And yeah. that yeah. was a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Actually, a hat that you walked into. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all that stuff is primarily just for Batman villains to yeah. use. <laughs> I think you're right. I'm we should sure bring it right. back. Yeah. yeah. So, um, how what was the uh, uh, casting process like on on doing this? Uh, uh, it was it was pretty great. It was um, you know, pilot season of 2020. So, in Jan- this was like January, so the pandemic was just a whisper in the air yeah. of like, oh, something's <laughs> happening in China. People right. are yeah. sick, right? Yeah. Um, and nobody knew anything was going to happen. And it started like any other, you know, it was a pilot season. So I had uh, just got a script from my agent and manager for this uh, new show called Kevin Can Fuck Himself. And to play Kevin, and I was like, all right, this is interesting. Let me <laughs> see what this uh, this is. And I read it, and I was like, this is brilliant. And I went in, and uh, sort of my first question for uh, Valerie, the creator, and uh, Craig, who's our showrunner, is I was like, I just want to make sure that what you're trying to do is not like totally skewer and hate on multicam sitcoms because I love multicam sitcoms. Mm-hmm. I've actually yeah. done a fair amount of multicam work in my in my career. And so like I, I know some people really hate it and think it's the cheesiest, like worst thing in the world. For me, I love it. I sort of love the history of it. I love the format of it. Um I recognize, obviously, that there are problems with it, which is what I think our show is trying to point out. Um, but I just wanted to make sure we weren't making a show that was like, look at this dumb fucking multicam. <laughs> yeah. All the dumb jokes they do. Yeah. And I think I think that we avoided that. You know, I think that we tried to make a really good, strong multicam that you literally could kind of take out of our show and put on CBS and mm-hmm. it would air for probably four or five seasons, you know? Yeah, um, and they really and they said, and Valerie was like, absolutely, I'm with you. She's like, I love multicams as well. I'm not trying to kill them. I'm trying to sort of point out the flaws with them and then explore more behind it. And I was like, all right, if that's your plan, then I'm 100% in. So I had uh, my first audition went well. Uh, they Wait, wait, can we just yes. stop for a second? What a fucking badass move. <laughs> so to go into an audition and be like, I just want to make sure that this is like up to the up to up what to I'm my standards, <laughs> right? That's fucking genius, though. I mean, I think I I think I I worded it not in not, a like, of course, you know, like, yeah. The but fuck to, are you making here? Yeah, you know, but like, to, make, to kind of make them explain it a yeah, little bit yeah. to give you a better sense of because what you're you doing. could do it either way. You could really lean into like a very sort of self aware, tongue in cheek, like we're making a multicam and everything's big and broad. Odd. Yeah. And and they weren't they didn't want to do that, which I, I felt good about. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay. I, I I went to uh, uh, my studio and network test and and that went well and you know they narrowed it down to a few guys. Uh, then they called me and they basically were like uh, they like you a lot. Uh, they've released everybody else and I was like so does that mean I got it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like. No, not yet, because they're still not totally sure on who they want to cast as Allison, who's the wife character, and she she is the lead of the show. Even though the title of the show is Kevin Can Fuck Himself, it is really Annie's show. Right. Um, and uh, and so they weren't they hadn't cast Annie yet, and so they were like, we we love you, but we just don't know if we can nail it down until we know who we're uh, who we're gonna have as Allison. And then uh, a couple weeks later, they they got Annie to sign on, and then so we did a chemistry read, and it went well, and. Mm-hmm. Then off we went. Now, so was she in second position with with your show because she was already on a show? Or no, Shit's Creek was done. It was that was done. It, yeah, it, they were just um, they were just sort of looking at different people oh, for the part. Oh wow. wow! Yeah, what a fucking amazing thing! <laughs> yeah, to it was, get her right off of like a a big show. Yeah, I mean it was, and that was obviously before she had won the Emmy. But I mean, everybody was talking about Shit's Creek at that point. I think their finale had maybe aired 
maybe a couple weeks before that. So, I mean, it really was like it sort of became a phenomenon right before it ended. Totally in the last season. Yeah, it was like a show where it's like I think I'd heard the name and it had been on for like five or six years. I'm like, I like Eugene Levy. I'll check it out sometime. And then all of a sudden, it was like it was everywhere, and they won all the Emmys for everything. And then it was like, oh, by the way, the show's over. It's over. Yeah, it was like it was crazy because it was on. It was a Canadian show, and it was on Pop TV, which a lot of people don't even have Pop TV, or they would get the (laughs) app, and then people were kind of talking about it, like, oh, have you seen the show Shit's Creek? It's great. And then once it went to Netflix, which was kind of like right at the beginning of the pandemic, that's when everybody was like, oh. This show is amazing. Yeah. The and same thing happened with uh, New Adventures of Old Christine. I think is <laughs> she won the Emmy for oh New right Adventures as they were after it was canceled. Yeah. yeah, she won the Emmy after the show was already done. Crazy. You yeah, know the cast then, of Corner Gas has just got their fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> we're next. <laughs> we're next. Who was on Corner Gas? Nobody. Was, oh come on. It was on. a Canadian show. <laughs> Wait, Corner <laughs> Gas though. I've never seen Corner Gas, <laughs> yeah. but. There's an actor on Corner Gas who's an older actor named Eric Peterson. Oh, really? Is there really? So <laughs> that's hilarious. He's an older what? Canadian actor. Uh-huh. Now, my last name is spelled Peterson, S-E-N. Mm-hmm. It's misspelled Peterson very often. Yeah. And his last name is S-O-N. Okay. So the union for a while didn't want to let me have my name because they were like, well, there's a different Eric <laughs> Peterson. I'm like, it's spelled differently. They're like, oh, it's kind of close. And then they just sort of stopped bothering me about it. Yeah. But it's funny. If you look at my IMDb, there are some overlaps they of mix his up. credits on mine and okay. my credits on his. So it looks like you're spelling one out. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hey, uh, before we continue doing the show, I, we got to talk about uh, the, the equipment that we're using mm-hmm. to make the show. Uh, make an epic show that is, uh, it sounds like you know, everyone is right here. Like yep. we're all sitting together, but we're not. We've got a fantastic multi-track recorder from Zoom. Um, yeah. If you need multi-track recordings, that's the only company you should even be looking at. Um, basically, we had issues when we had to switch to doing things during a pandemic, mm-hmm. and we were we went from doing a show with people in person to people over the phone. And Zoom just made it a piece of cake. Yeah, you bet. ZoomCorp.com is the website, and uh, they're you know th- this has made it so that we could interview people in. Uh, Nigeria, New Zealand, New Zealand, um, yeah. Guatemala, um, uh, Austria, Czech, like the Czech, the Czech Republic. Um, when we were Are doing you just all naming those, countries now? Yeah. Well, no. When we were doing all the interviews with the cast of uh, 90 Day Fiance, we were yeah. talking to people, you know, in the, in the Ukraine. Yep. Like mm-hmm. we were doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And then just the other day, when we had uh, John Reese Davies on the show from New Zealand, he was in New Zealand the whole time. Sounded it sounded like, like he was, he was sitting in the room with us. Yeah. yeah. It truly is the mark of excellence for podcasting. Zoom, Live Track L8, 8 Track Mixer Recorder, the board for creators, podcasting, music, and beyond. Yeah, it is a badass system, and uh, we're very lucky to be working with uh, Zoom. Go check out zoomcorp.com. That's zoomcorp.com. Dot com Zoom. You have to say it three times. That's what people do in ad, ads, right? Zoom, what is it, Stephen? ZoomCorp.com. It's ZoomCorp.com. We're talking about ZoomCorp.com. All right, let's get back to the show. Hey, uh, we are back. Um, uh, I gotta, I gotta talk to Eric about something that is near and dear to my heart, mm-hmm. and um, it's how we first met. I know where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm talking, of course. Yeah, yeah you had a meet cute. We had a meet cute. We did. We really did. We yeah. absolutely did. Um, your you you starred <laughs> in Shrek the Musical mm-hmm. uh, on on Broadway and in the first national tour and in the L.A. cast of yes. Shrek the Musical. And I starred in Shrek the Musical as the Shrek original in the Broadway workshops and readings. Yes, and uh, I'm I saw you do the show here in Los Angeles. That's fantastic. God, you were fucking fantastic, man. Thank you. So. Tell me, tell me about you. Let's talk about Broadway. Let's <laughs> let's do some Broadway chatting let's about about uh, your about it, your Broadway career. Are they just harassed because they're like Stephen has no hair and Eric has a wonderful head of hair? <laughs> so we're going with the guy with hair. Hey, hey, hey! Possibly that's probably uh, no, 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 no. I mean, Eric's fucking incredible. I mean, you've done other stuff on Broadway too. Have, like, yeah. w- tell us about your. Career. Where did you get started? Where are you originally from? I'm originally from Chicago, suburb of Chicago. 
Uh, I was, uh, I got, I started doing theater in high school, never done it before that, uh, sort of fell into it. I was always a, a class clown, but didn't start doing any performing until freshman year of high school. Uh, went to college at Bradley University in Peoria, Illinois, mm-hmm. a little small liberal arts school. Uh, I graduated, I went to work, uh, at a place called the Barn Theater in Augusta, Michigan, which to do summer stock theater. And it was great. My plan was to do that summer in Michigan, move out to L.A. because I wanted to do TV and film. Uh, I enjoyed Broadway. I was a big Broadway fan. But I'll be honest, my dream was to be on a sitcom. Like, that's really where my brain was. But this summer at the barn in Michigan, I started dating a girl. And I thought she was pretty great. And I said to her at the end of the summer, I was like, what are you doing at the end of the summer? And she was like, oh, I'm moving to New York. And I was like, that's crazy. (laughs) I'm moving to New York, too. (laughs) Oh, my God. And I totally changed my whole life plan, like, in a conversation. Uh, She is now my wife. And we have two kids. So this was was the right call. This was definitely the the move to make oh my <laughs> god that's amazing yeah and so i changed my plan and moved to new york uh with lisa my wife and we were in new york for about uh, probably about four three four years before i got shrek on broadway um doing a lot of children's theater and you know off off broadway theater and children's theater tours and stuff like that and first national tours what um, children's theater tours did you do well i did a lot with a company called theater works USA. of course theater yes. works in her yeah of That's course right my wife now works for them she does no she, way yes. she's like in charge of digital content and uh she's like growing the business here in california oh yeah so she God. like has a, a real job for them right now which is awesome. yeah they're the ones who do they do like uh basically children's musical theater yep productions all over the world they go right? like they're mostly based out of new york and then they go to schools all across the country and they have like six actors in a van that also are hired as stage managers who build the sets and costumes and you just drive around and hit two or three schools in a day and wow. it's like really paying your dues but you can get your equity card that way and it's a great great company wow. i got i got uh cast as the cowardly lion in yes. in uh their their version of the of wizard, wizard of Oz. Oz. that's and great. I, I couldn't do it so oh, no i got i was Doing and I was under contract doing a terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible musical. Is that the Stoop on a Stoop on Orchard Street. Yeah, one of the worst <laughs> musicals ever written in history. And which I was I could not get out of the contract. Which was a <laughs> sequel to Fiddler on the Roof. Yes. No. Yeah, it was a, an unauthorized sequel to Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> it was the oh most embarrassing. We would go to small towns do the show and leave before the review would come out. <laughs> and it was early days of the internet, so no yeah. one was Googling to see sure. how the show With was. The great review you got in Chicago. In Chicago just uh, Chicago Sun-Times said, Stephen Kramer Glickman is loud. <laughs> and then, uh, the, but the best one, my favorite one of all time, was Backstage West did a review back oh. when that existed. Sure. And it said... Um, uh, Stoop on Orchard Street tries to pass off a moldy slab of ham as a Jewish delicacy. <laughs> this is oh worse. My God. <laughs> this is the the worst thing that has happened to Los Angeles since since the Rodney King trial. <laughs> no, oh my God. That's what it said in Backstage West. I mean, you should print that and frame wow. it. And it that's was... that's when. That's when I, that's when we all met. Like because they were, they were staying at a motel attached to a bowling alley in Canoga Park. Yep. Where I was hosting an open mic yes. at the bar at the bowling alley in Canoga Park. Mm-hmm. And then Steve wanted to start doing stand up and I was like a year in and we became friends and then Mike that's was around amazing. to the same Wow. Time, so. Crazy. so you guys would leave before the reviews came in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were following the frontier tonic salesman yeah. business yeah. model. Basically. Yeah. Basically. That's exactly <laughs> what Sell we were it doing. Sell it and get out of town quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People would be like, this is the worst thing to happen since the. <laughs> you like the don't bar. even do a curtain call. You <laughs> oh, <know? yeah. laughs> Just get like, the hell out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we were. How we did were they hated. know to bring tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. No one was calling the next town. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. It was crazy. Anyways. Um, okay. So we moved to New York and we started doing theater did theater work stuff um eventually uh i got the call to go i'd auditioned for shrek probably around the same time that you i don't know if you auditioned for it or just offered mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. um uh for the reading and didn't get it but they liked me and uh kept me in mind and then when the show was already open on broadway uh the guy that was playing papa ogre and one of the three little pigs uh his name was jacob ming trent uh he uh, hurt his knee and had to be out of the show for like 12 weeks and so they brought me and a couple of other guys in to be a replacement i got the job um this is kind of a fun story when i went it was down to me and one other guy uh who's actually a friend of mine i won't say his name but uh we were both up for it 
they said to us, they were like, listen, you both are great. We really don't know who to pick. Go to the costume shop. They're going to try the costumes on you guys. And we just got to be honest, whoever fits the costume is better. We're going <laughs> to give the job to because like it's just a 12 week yeah. replacement. Now, I had no Broadway credits at that point. So this was a big deal to me. Like yeah. to get a Broadway credit was a big deal. And so I went in and the costumes did not fit me. Jacob is a bigger guy than me. And uh, a person who I owe so much to, this guy named Brian Bustos, who was the costume associate, was there doing the fittings. And he told we became very good friends later uh, in life and uh, later in the process. And and he told me, he was like, you know, the other guy actually fit the costumes a little better, but you were a nicer person. You were very nice to me and seemed really excited about the opportunity. Wow. And so I told them that the <laughs> costumes would work. And we just did a bunch of adjustments sort of like on the fly to like make them fit for you. Oh, my God. And so wow, that's cool. I thought that was really cool and so then i got brought into the show and i was uh, got my broadway debut and it was very exciting wow and then so that track though also was the shrek understudy yeah but then the show also had a standby and some people might not know what a standby is in on broadway when there's a really big role like phantom and phantom of the opera or alphaba and wicked like these big huge vocally demanding roles a lot of times you'll have a standby which is this weird contract where you're paid a principal contract rate so you're pra- you're paid like you're the star of the show you have your own dressing room but you're not in the show in any way unless the star is out so you are sort of the first option but it, as opposed to being an understudy who's in the ensemble of the show and then steps up to the the lead role okay it's a very odd experience because eventually i became the standby when brian darcy james left the show uh ben crawford who was the standby became shrek and i became the standby and when you're the standby you literally go to the theater every night you listen to the show you have to be there until (laughs) and you're not getting paid no you're getting paid oh you're You're getting paid paid handsomely but it's odd to be at the theater and not a part of it you really are not a part of it at all wow and um you basically stay there until like right before curtain call and then they're like all right you can go home and you just listen to the show just, every night. It's just to like make sure that he doesn't break just, his ankle yeah, or something. It's basically if like in the first act he twisted his ankle and they had to stop the show, they would say, all right, and then I would go into makeup and then they would start the show again. Okay. Um, it's which, sort of like being a relief pitcher where you're yes. just there just in case they need just to call in you case. in. Yeah, just, just in play. case. Yeah. Uh, and so then I became the standby, ended up getting to go on a couple of times as Shrek. Um I have a good story for that as well. Oh I, should, I, tell me, I guess that's funny. the point yeah. of the podcast, yeah. right? Kidding me? Tell stories. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> um, basically, uh, when Brian left the show and I was saying how Ben became Shrek and then I was becoming the standby, they also, in that same big meeting, announced that we were going to be closing in like 10 or 11 weeks. So it was like not the next week, but like we were nearing the end of the run. And I was pretty convinced that Ben was not going to miss at all in the show because, you know, it was a big deal for him to be becoming Shrek. And there was only, you know, 11 weeks left. And so I had my put in rehearsal that first Friday of his first week. And a put in rehearsal is where you do a rehearsal in the afternoon with most of the ensemble. Some of the stars may come. It sort of is up to them. And you do the show with lights. You're in costume. You have props. But everybody else in the show is just in street clothes. <laughs> it, they And they're all very pissed off to be there, usually. Because yeah. it's like yeah. their yeah. day, not their day off, but they're, they don't want to be there when they're not performing. Yeah. And it's really just to help the person who's going into the show so they can actually feel what it's like with the lights and the costumes. Uh, and so when I did my put-in rehearsal, like I had a guy a guy playing Princess Fiona. for <laughs> You know, like the <laughs> dance captain was yeah. playing Princess Fiona. Who was playing Fiona by that po- at that point? Uh, that was still Sutton. Still Sutton. Yeah. Sutton did it the whole All time. Right. Um, and so I did this put-in rehearsal, and it went great, and I felt really awesome about it. And I came home, and when I went to go into my apartment, the door was, like, padlocked. And I was like – or not padlocked, but, like, the <laughs> main lock was on. And I was like, babe, what – to my wife, I was like, what – can you let me in? Like, what's going on? And she eventually unlocks the door, and she's uh, got a video camera, and she's filming me. And I'm thinking – she just wants to know how great I was at the put-in rehearsal. <laughs> oh. And so she's like, how'd it go? And I was like, oh, babe, I crushed it. I was awesome. It was so good. I felt so proud of myself. I was really happy with it. Everybody was really complimentary. I feel really good. She was like, awesome. But she was still filming me. And I was like, why are you filming me? And she said, look in the bathroom. And I was like, all right. I went in the bathroom. There were some clothes hanging up. And I was like, you did the laundry. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Thank you for doing that. She's like, look at the sink. And on the sink was three positive pregnancy tests. And so we what? found out that night. Whoa! That was for wow. my, my daughter, my first kid. Uh, we found out that night that we were going to be parents. And it was this was good. This was something we wanted. Yeah. We were wow. you know, wanting to do. And oh so God. it was like 
a super exciting night and That's so a, we're like so much good news so much good news. Yeah. and so like I, we stayed up all night and we're thinking what if it's a boy what if it's a girl oh my god and your whole life just changes and and then i well, probably only got like two hours of sleep and then at like eight in the morning the next day on that saturday the stage manager called me and she's like ben is throwing up and sick and you're on a shrek for both shows today oh and i was like shit whoa yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. so right. in the matter of 24 hours <laughs> i like oh my found God. out i was gonna be a dad start in a broadway show yeah. it was spectacular on two hours of sleep on two hours of sleep <laughs> oh. now i will say it went really well and a lot of people were in the cast were like oh my god you're so like focused and and centered and and i was like I couldn't tell them because you don't tell people yeah, like yeah. right away. You wait till you know a few months. And so I just what I think though is that because half of my brain was like, I'm gonna be a dad, like I it didn't allow me to freak out about like yeah. holy shit, you're playing Shrek on Broadway. Um so yeah, that was that's my story of, of oh when, my I, God. when I when when <laughs> I actually I'm fist played. Yes. When that I is played the Shrek. most incredible story. And then I got cast as Shrek on the first national tour. Mm-hmm. Which ended here in Los Angeles, and then I ran into Stephen. Yeah, I Kramer came. I got Garrett. to come to the. Uh, to do you the remember? Was night? that? Uh, 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 it's right next to the Pantages, or no? It's across the street. Uh, uh, Iron and Stone, Fire and Ice. What is that bar called? Yeah, yeah. The one next to the Pantages is the Frolic Room. That, is, yeah, so I mean, not that one. It's directly dive. across the okay. street from it. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's where we met. Yeah, we met. We met there, and um, I. Yeah, I was like. Totally blown away. That was just Stephen. Did it, you it, cosplay as Shrek when you went? I did not. <laughs> I did not cosplay. I did wear a terrible outfit, though. It was a green. I believe you. It was I've seen a, how you a dress. green <laughs> denim suit. Ooh. So Ooh. yeah, it was Ooh. not. Nobody like liked Mr. It. Green jeans. Yeah, like Mr. That's green <laughs> jeans. It was not okay. Was, I regret that that suit greatly. Did and that one didn't end <sighs> you up in OK Magazine no, for worst dress. Super embarrassing. <laughs> you um, have been worst dress in OK yes, Magazine. That's yeah. true. Okay, hang on yeah. a second. Let's. Stay, stay focused. Sorry. Stay focused on the man. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I get, <laughs> it's okay. I get thrown. There's so many things to make funny. I right know. Right <laughs> make, just, you can make fun of me a different day. Uh, no, you can make fun of it's me. It's just fun day. that even when other people tell stories, we still find <laughs> <way> to, <make laughs> <fun> <laughs> to turn it on. <laughs> now, were you um, were you being directed by Jason? Was Jason Moore directing? Yes. At the time? Uh, Jason was directing. Uh, the tour is a little interesting in that uh, uh, Rob. Ashford uh, was also co-directing. So we had kind of an interesting situation with that because Why? they, uh, uh, Jason would come in for a few days and kind of direct and then he would go away and Rob would come in and direct for a few days and they would kind of be like undoing each other's stuff. <laughs> and we were like, who are we, who are we listening to? Like who's, yeah. who's actually the, the boss here um but we ended up finding it i i was really proud of the tour production because i feel like we really um you know the whole cast was really tight it was a really great group of truly good people Mm -hmm. um who were really kind of looking out for each other and we had we had such a good time, and you had Amy uh, Garcia on your Amy tour. Amy Garcia was on there. So much. She's Haven the Burton was playing. Oh Fiona. my God, Haven Burton's yeah. the fucking greatest. Yes, she was great. Oh, I love them. So um, much. David Vaughn was playing Farquad. Uh, Alan oh. Mingo Jr. was playing Donkey. It was great. It was a she spectacular cast. Christmas. Yeah. Did um, how musically did anything change from the Broadway show to the tour, or did, um, was that about the same? It was pretty much the same. We, I mean, one of the big things is we had this dragon in the tour that was so much better than the one on Broadway. The the dragon song hmm. it was a new song and a new puppet. The dragon on Broadway was this like 30 foot tall thing on like rolling casters that was essentially, if it was a dragon, it was just from the neck up, right? Mm-hmm. It was just mm-hmm. the neck up and then this huge head that a person would sit inside of and control the mouth and the eyes and stuff like that. It fell over a couple times. <laughs> it looked bad because it just kind of like rolled around the stage <laughs> to move its head. It was yeah. very, very odd. And then for the tour, they it was a full fucking dragon. It was like head to tail, oh, wings. Yeah. It mm-hmm. took five people to puppeteer it. Wow. Um, like three people in the middle, one guy in the front doing the mouth and the eyes, another person on the back, people on the wings. It was spectacular. And I mean, when we rehearsed with that dragon, because we were, you know, a tour, they had to rent out a Broadway theater to rehearse it because it didn't Whoa. fit in New 42nd Street Studios because it's it was so big. It was very, so, very impressive. When you go on a national tour for a musical like that, uh, I want to ask you numbers, but is the yeah. money equivalent, better, or worse than when you're doing it on Broadway? Um, it's about the same. Mm-hmm. I think it's about the same. It's, uh, you know, obviously 
the pay is pretty, pretty there, there's much more um like ladder levels on Broadway I feel like there's like a, a tier of people that are okay. probably making about this much yeah and then you have you know you have people like a Sutton Foster or movie stars coming you have to a couple do, Tonys or whatever you know who have a couple yeah. Tonys they're making a, a certain level and then you have like the movie stars doing Broadway that yeah. they make a certain level but it is it's pretty democratized and it so yeah the money on a tour is about the same and it, in actuality you end up making more money because you have your per diem yeah and you're not you're not paying New York rent so oh, if yeah. you can right. if you can drop your apartment yeah. and go on tour, oh, it is like you can save a lot more. Spectacular! Wow! Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. That's you can so save up to try to get that Adina Menzel money. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Adele Now, how have you felt as far as like being in LA? I was told something by the <laughs> by the <laughs> by the head of casting at Universal uh-huh. uh, when I when I got let go from Shrek and came out here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was brought into her office for a, a meeting, and she said, um, hey, congratulations on starring in Shrek the Musical. I heard you were amazing. Um, what's next for you? And I went, actually. <laughs> what really happened was is I did the Broadway workshops and the readings, and then I was let go right before it opened, right. and then I, uh, I, you know, I've, I, I moved back out here. And she said, um, well, you should know, uh, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, whatever we have picked up, uh, d- that knowledge about, about you, Broadway yeah. and things yeah. and whatever, is whatever we know. So yeah. don't correct anybody ever yeah. again, number yeah. one. Yeah. Num- <laughs> like, if someone gives you a, a, a credit, just take the credit take and, it. And, yeah. and go, number one. Number two, um, she was like, in L.A., we only know about Broadway because we have to. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're <laughs> most of us don't know anything Any. about what's really going on out there. They couldn't name yeah, we anybody. Who, yeah, yeah, totally. So, so just, you know, <laughs> you know, just, you know it's, like, it's like we have to know what we have to know, and sure. that's about it. They you know? know, like, who maybe gets nominated for a Tony. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah but beyond that, not much. Yeah. yeah. It is funny because – Have you e- noticed that out here? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, even, even in uh, – you know, in your intro to me of saying like he starred as Shrek on Broadway for two shows, I did. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but like, and then I definitely I did it for a full year on tour. Sure, but yeah. like when people say that, I sometimes I feel very conflicted. Of like, should I, I wasn't, I didn't like I played Shrek for two performances on Broadway, but I wasn't like the guy the whole time on Broadway. But then I did it, so it's very muddy. So when I people think it would say pass it, legal, I think it would pass <laughs> legal. Yeah. Th- you know, when like, people say it, I usually, like you said, I just I try not to correct them, and I just say, go. It's yeah. two more than Stephen did. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's oh, cold. Bitch. That's cold. Ah. I swear to God, I love knowing you that you've read. been waiting behind the grassy knoll <laughs> with that this whole time. <laughs> just like, ready. It's two more. Than <laughs> the motorcade is coming along now. The President is waving. <laughs> oh my God! Something's <laughs> happened. God damn! That was pretty good. So You're good. welcome, Steven. It's <laughs> <laughs> so what it's like to be friends with comedians all the time. That's just what happens. We're just brutal. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, have you uh, w- have you noticed like w- you know like when it comes to musical theater in Los Angeles? Any? Well, I any think. St- that are you going to do a Broadway movie musical? Is that? Gonna I happen? would love to. My God, I feel it's actually funny. I feel like whenever they are doing musicals in you know either TV or film form, I'm always telling my agents, I'm like, get me in for yeah. this. Like this is in my wheelhouse. And they're always like, oh yeah, it's it's tough. It's real tough. They're like just looking at movie stars, and I'm like. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like I don't know. I feel like, like you said, that they people that are in LA casting are aware of Broadway enough. I will say it's been helpful in that my Broadway credits. You know, my two probably biggest credits are Shrek and School of Rock, which both mm-hmm. are films. Oh, yeah. Hell so yeah. it's like helpful to people to be like, I can say, oh, I played the Jack Black role in School of Rock on Broadway, mm-hmm. and people know what that is. Yeah. yeah. It's Get it. you don't have to be like it was an adaptation of an old Disney news <laughs> thing. Yeah. Right. Like, right. What? I don't yeah. know what that. Is. You know, <laughs> it so, was three ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's been helpful in that way because my credits are sort of like. They they just understand them do, better, I think. Right. Do you think that the internet has uh, 
they, they've made Shrek into a much bigger thing than I ever thought it was supposed to be, right? And that, like, the internet is obsessed with Shrek in a yeah. way that doesn't make a lot of sense in, yeah. like, the whole thing with Smash Mouth and whatever. And yeah. it's, like, just become yeah. a meme that Shrek is, like, a thing. Do you think that has like kept that musical touring in areas where it might it might not otherwise even exist or um I don't know I think that I actually think that the musical is a a good musical I think mm-hmm. it's a good standalone musical which I think that's why but I it is odd the way that the internet loves Shrek and I uh, I always can't totally tell if it is a true love of Shrek <laughs> or if it is a like look at this fucking movie let's all just like point at it but I don't know if yeah. it's a good point. Like, but I, I, I just saw the other day somebody sent me Supreme, the mm-hmm. like streetwear yeah. brand, is partnering with Shrek right now. And they have yeah. – it says Supreme, but the S is, is the like Shrek. the Shrek. No. Yes. Yes. You yes. search Stop. it. Are you <laughs> serious? Wow. Oh, this I came must, out a couple yeah. days yeah. ago. Supreme has doing a collaboration with Shrek, and so they have new – like. Supreme, but with the green. Yeah, because like the there. two things they've oh done that with are Shrek and B Movie. Yeah, are ones that yeah, like I'm like I two. don't understand. I don't get it. But it's it's a thing, and I'm happy yeah. for everyone involved because they're still getting paychecks. I think it's right. because I think it's because they weren't Disney. I yeah. think because I think that does they, help. Yeah, oh, yeah, they yeah. were also like, because I Disney think protects it, everything, and these movies are just like internet. Go for it. Sure. Well, also, it also like they yeah. would show Shrek and B movie on television. Sure. Yeah. Because they yeah. would never do that with Disney animated yeah. movies before, you know, Disney Plus. And so. I think that the age that kids were when Shrek came out was that formidable like yeah. four, five, six, seven years old. And now mm. those kids are the TikTok kids and they're yeah. you know that are oh my God. Into all that. Yeah. yeah, it's kinda you're watching kind of the birth of their uh, sense of irony yeah. as time totally. goes on. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's kinda cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned School of Rock and Shrek, of course. They both were such ingrained performances uh, yeah. in, in film. Sure. How much of that did they want you to echo, and how much of it was, did they you get wiggle room, I guess? Um, uh, they've always been, every director that I've worked with in that sort of capacity, because uh, another one that I did, I did... Um, uh, I played Buddy the Elf in Elf, oh, okay. Elf oh, yeah. Musical. So that's another one that is yeah. like what? people like totally think Iconic, of Will Ferrell and you're like of, yeah. so you so my approach has always been and it seems to have worked you have to give the audience something from that performance that they recognize that they feel comfortable with. Some actors say fuck that, I'm doing my own thing completely. Right. I'm against that. I feel like an audience when they're coming to a known property they are willing to see your interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. But if you completely wreck or put to the side yeah. what yeah. they loved, which is why they bought the ticket, they're only going to be angry at you. So it's not like you that have to do a, a copycat performance, but like you have to do either like one or two classic lines with the same kind of cadence that it was said in the movie so that the audience just feels like, yes, he gets it. And yeah. then they're willing to let you do your own thing with other moments. But if you don't right. give them something to like latch onto, they just get mad at you. So if you do Terminator the musical, you'll say, I'll be back. Pretty you have to. Say I think you have to. I mean, it would be, <laughs> it would be, be sung. Back. Yeah, it would be sung. Yeah. It's a whole I song. I will return <laughs> shortly. Yeah. And Sutton Foster would, of course, play uh, uh, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. We would I mean, that's that. the big 11 o'clock number. I'll be, yes. back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't you worry. Now I really want to see back. Terminator the musical. And I'll there's like back. the guys with the thumb as they're like going under yeah. the water. That's a whole, yeah, a whole chorus. Oh, of guys yeah, yeah. yeah. Sinking into the lava. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you can have the other Terminator, the uh, the the the, the T one thousand. T one thousand. Yeah. Just be like, anything you can do, I, I can, can do better. better. <laughs> I can be anyone better than you. Yeah. I feel like he's a big tap dancer as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. With all the metal. <laughs> big yeah. Tap dance. Top hat and cane yeah, numbers. Yeah. But yeah. the cane morphs out of his hand. Yes. Holy shit. We need to copyright this immediately. Don't air. The greatest idea. The, yeah, fuck. We gotta make this happen. <laughs> um, do you have? Are there are there musical roles that you haven't done? Wait. You know what? Before we get to that, 
ba da ba ba da we need to play a commercial. Ching, ding, ding, ding. Hey, Matt, before we continue doing the show, mm-hmm. we got to talk about what we're talking into. These Sennheiser microphones are fantastic. Yeah, they are literally top of the line. The best company in the world when it comes to microphones, headphones, audio equipment like this. I mean, yeah. it's just so damn good. If you want to sound good talking into something, get yourself some Sennheiser microphones. Yeah, it makes you sound epic. Mike Black, uh, say something epic. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages. Um, If I say any more, lawyers will get involved. (laughs) Here we have to. (laughs) Exactly. But But I said it clearly, and you you can hear it clearly. (laughs) I can hear it. It sounds perfect. Um, Hey, uh, go and uh, go check out Sennheiser. If you are looking for audio equipment, uh, you're looking for a great microphone. This is the one to use, Mike. Matt, what is what's this one called that, that we're using? Uh, this is the MD42. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect. Find them at Sennheiser.com. You bet. All right, let's get back to the show. Hey, um, all right, other musicals that you would like to do that you haven't done yet, is there – are there mm. specific roles, anything that... Because, uh, you know, people ask that. I'm sure as an actor, sure. you get this a lot where people go, what's something that you haven't got? Yeah, yeah. You want to be in a TV show that you have? You could be on any show. And you're <laughs> right. like, that's not how this business works. Exactly. We don't yeah. decide the future of our career. You can right. be on any <laughs> show. Yeah, you could be on a, we don't have it, these decisions. But when it comes to musical theater, there are, like, dream roles. Sure. Um, I, I, it's funny. I. <laughs> it's funny. The, uh, the guy that is playing... The Phantom of the Opera right now is is Ben Crawford, who I was talking about, who became Shrek mm-hmm. and then I became his standby. Oh my god! So I don't want Ben to think that I'm just trying to <laughs> take his job <laughs> left and right. But I would love to play the Phantom in Phantom of the Opera. I think just because that was like the first musical that I ever really loved, and like I remember going yeah. to the Carol Stream Public Library and like renting the two disc, you know, Phantom of the Opera soundtrack and. And I would bring it back at the end of two weeks, and I'd be like, does anybody need the Phantom soundtrack? And they're like, no, Eric, and you can take it again. I was like, yes! And then I'd like re- oh recheck God. it out for another two You're weeks. You're a good theater nerd. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're Just good. You. You're fine. Yeah. There's nobody else in this town who rents any of these. Um, Have you looked around recently <laughs> right. at this point? You're in the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. You're fine. Um, but no, that's one. And then the other answer that I always give, and it sounds a little cliche, and I, I didn't come up with it, but it is true in that – I think at this point in my career, the thing that is most exciting or would be most exciting to go back to Broadway to do would be an original role in something that has not been done yet. So that's a a vague answer, non-answer, but like, I think that would be the the next thing that I would love to do is to create a, an original role. So Terminator in Terminator the Musical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We've Yours got to create. That's it. That's it. We got him. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, when it came to coming out to LA and, and getting into acting, uh, one of the first things that I saw you in was the Kirstie television show yeah. with Kirstie Alley. Yeah. Uh, from from the Cheers is the way I. Well, and it. from. Star Trek. Star, Star Trek, Trek, yes. <laughs> Look Matt who's Walker. talking. Bring it back. <laughs> yes. Bring it back to Star Trek. I, I always have a Star Trek reference. On sure. He has a shirt right now that is... Uh, my, there you go. My Ferengi Live Long and Profit shirt yeah. that I had made. <laughs> you had that shirt made? Yeah, specially yes. made. You can buy them on our website until we get a cease and desist. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. that. Are you serious? Yeah. It's a great looking shirt. Yeah. Where's your mask? Do you have the mask too? Uh, well, I've got my my L.A. Trekkies mask that I made. Like, he, he oh yeah, Trekkies logo. Too. He has a Trekkies there logo. You go. <laughs> yeah, you can buy that too. Just go to thre- uh, what the, the nighttime show dot com. The nighttime show dot com. There's a link. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you yeah. go. Okay, uh, so uh, Kirsty. Uh, yeah, Star Trek. Yes. Um, no, guys, Kirsty <laughs> Kirsty Kirst- Alley. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? How was that? <laughs> you know, it was great. Uh, uh, that was a, a huge moment for me in my career. In that, like. As I told you, I always wanted to do a sitcom. I really yeah. wanted to be in a sitcom. And this was a series regular on a sitcom that went Huge. a full season. So, like, this was a, a major milestone, like, you know, notch in my belt of, like, this was my dream all along. It, the experience of making the show was brilliant. Uh, it was uh, Kirstie Alley. Uh, I, the show, the premise of it was she was, like, a big Broadway star who had given up her child for adoption because her career was just about to take off. And now her schlubby son sort of comes back into her life <laughs> as, like, a, a grown man. But, like, his adoptive parents have recently passed, and he's trying to, like, reconnect with oh, her. Okay. And, um, and she lives this big, fancy life, and he's just, like, a Joe Schmo. 
<laughs> and so uh, Kirsty played my mom. I played her son, uh, and then Michael Richards of mm-hmm. you know yeah. of Seinfeld oh, fame uh, played her driver, and Rhea Perlman of Cheers fame oh, wow. played her uh, assistant. So it was wow. the three of them and me. Holy and shit. Uh, I mean, uh, it was really cool because I mean, it was on that's billboards like, and that's like buses seventeen and Emmys right there. Oh yeah, in that yeah. Room. The, I yeah. mean, this was so great. There, the billboards for the show literally said <laughs> they had uh, a big long couch and then uh-huh. they had uh ria kirsty and michael all on one side of the couch all sort of huddled together yeah. and looking at the <laughs> other side of the couch and i was at the other side of the couch with a big gulp like <laughs> sipping it just looking all dopey and and then on it it said three comedy legends and Eric. Oh, wow. <laughs> and what's so Holy great is that, crap. that awesome. my character name was not Eric on the show. They literally, and they didn't put my last name. It was just three oh, comedy legends my and Eric. God. And that was, that's what the campaign was. Wow. And I loved it. I thought it was so funny. That is funny. And so great. And, you know, the experience of working with them and we had, you know, the guest star, we did 12 episodes, but like the guest stars we brought in every week, it was like Jason Alexander, Kristen Chenoweth, John Travolta, George oh Wendt, God. Boris Leachman. Oh my uh, I mean, God. every week. Was How did that like, show not succeed? Um, you know what it was is that TV Land at the time, they were still doing their, they had like the X's and okay. uh, um, uh, 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 Cedric the Entertainer had a show. I can't mm-hmm. remember what that one was called, but they were doing. And um, uh, what was the one with uh, Betty White? Uh, Hot, uh, Cleveland. Hot Cleveland. Yeah. Yes. So like they had all these multicam, and the their, basically their idea was take old sitcom stars you love, give them a new sitcom. And then we did our season. It kind of fit right in with there. And then like at the end of our season as a brand, TV land was like, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to, and actually Sutton Foster's show younger is sort of like what they were like, we're going to do single camera more, uh, dramatic stuff. So it was really just form Timing. changing. They just were like, you know. Yeah. But yeah, but it, it, as an experience, it was spectacular. Well, I'm going to start the Twitter campaign to save the Kirsty Alley <laughs> show. Kirstie. Uh, bring back Kirsty. <laughs> Reboot it. So, so was this Michael Richards prior to? No, no, no. This no. is after. This is like this is ten. This is about ten years after. This is, Holy so crap! This I'll is after you. the Laugh Factory. And everything. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How did that? How would they do that? It's, well, it's here's TV. what I'll tell you. Wow. wow! It was. You're getting them at a uh, bar- discount. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, here's what was I'll say. He paying them to be on the show. <laughs> here's what I'll say about Michael. Obviously, what. He said in that rant. By the way, yes, I'm the person that called Michael and banned him from the comedy store. That yeah. was my job. Was wow. to call him and ban. So he I was you also had to call to Joe Rogan to ban him I from the comedy had store. To ban Joe. <laughs> that was, he was that the went super guy. well yeah. for me. I bet he took that one. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, but but like that, like I was trying to time it out. I was like, wait, <laughs> that happened before I was I did Shrek. So how is it possible? Yeah, you're like, holy fuck. So. I, uh, as I was saying, <laughs> uh, what Michael said was horrendous and hateful yeah. and terrible. Crazy. Yeah. Um, what I will say is that Michael Richards is the oddest human I've ever met, <laughs> but also comedically brilliant. So sure. e- even when you would just try to say to him, like, hey, Michael, how was your weekend? He would sort of be like, he, he couldn't look you, like he couldn't even square up to you. He sort of had to get outside of like a squared up, position <laughs> physically yeah and you'd be like hey man how was your weekend and he'd be like oh, what, 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 weekend do the, how do the week do they end do the weeks end <laughs> they kind of go don't they and i'm like all right cool bro yeah uh, like Holy like he just crap. his brain is always thinking so outside of the box of what most people c- collectively accept as reality sure and so while i am in no way you know Oh yeah, no, no, no! Pray, yeah, like no, letting of him off the hook. I think he is a, a super interesting guy who's always trying to push envelopes. And working with him was great because he was—he really tried to like look out for me and and give me advice and like say this is what you want to do in your career and look out for and stuff. And you know, but also seeing him, uh, you know, while he was doing the show, I remember this is a, kind of a sad story about him is that. The first uh, in the pilot, there was mm-hmm. a moment where he his character had to light a cigarette, right? Just mm-hmm. a little thing. But you can't light a cigarette on TV. You can, like, have a cigarette, but you can't <laughs> show lighting of a cigarette on TV. Yeah. And <clears throat> he it was just a little tiny bit. And he went to light the cigarette, and, like, on one take, it, it actually lit because he kind of 
literally yeah. not a big deal and it's it's film like it's not, yeah. it's not the end of the world right. and he was so upset he was like i'm so so i'm i'm really <laughs> sorry i i didn't i know you told me not to do it he was like a broken man you know and it was yeah. it was really hard to see because you could see that like he had this comedic thought process going on but he was also totally aware of what everyone was thinking about him oh, all the time yeah, yeah, and yeah. so as a as a person it was it was heavy to sort of be next to that and seeing that um there one more michael story <laughs> please <laughs> he we we had to do this thing uh and it was my first big show so i didn't know that, and i guess this happens but like we were in new york for the premiere and we had to go to a couple luncheons with like you know people from johnson and johnson yeah like the ad you know, all the ad executives yeah. and you just wine and dine them and stuff and we were sitting at this lunch and somebody's talking to us and some ad executive he's like so what's it like when you're like doing a show and like people are just like talking and stuff and like has anybody ever just like interrupted you while you're doing a show oh. and he was not trying to lead michael there he really okay. was just Ooh, genuinely wow. asking like mm -hmm. has anybody ever interrupted your show and like <laughs> like says stuff and michael just went yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell and then the oh. guy kind of put together like what he was referencing and he was like oh, oh i was i'm s i didn't mean and he was like no it's okay it's, it's okay oh but it was extremely God. awkward wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. that is fucking but the experience of doing kirsty was wonderful yeah i love wow. it yeah. Like, what, was she, what was she like you know kirsty is i always say that she what you see on tv is her at an 11 but in life she's at like a seven Okay. So she's the same person. She is that sort of big, broad, brassy kind of personality. Um, and it just, she knows how to sort of turn it up for TV. But what you see on TV is she is a, I a think, big personality. I think we all knew that when she gave that Emmy speech. I don't she, remember her Emmy. So she gave one of the greatest Emmy speeches. She goes up, wins the Emmy for Cheers, yeah. uh, gets on stage, and she was married to Parker Stevenson at the time, I want to say. Yeah. And she like said, like, and I also want to thank Parker for giving me the big one or giving me the hard one all these years. It was like, <laughs> give me the high hard one might have been the phrase she used. It was like, at, at the Emmy's, she just basically talked about basically getting railed so yeah it was, it was very entertaining <laughs> yeah i was i don't know 12 or something at the time and <laughs> yeah, i was like so this is scandalous. the greatest thing i've ever seen you know oh, yeah. yeah i love that i yeah. love that yeah um what uh before we wrap up we want, i just want to ask like coming up next what is next for you what do you uh what's the plan well we are uh obviously fingers crossed for season two of mm -hmm. kevin can fuck himself Absolutely. Uh, everybody feels good about it the show sort of ended with a big cliffhanger so i i feel uh confident that amc will pick us up but we have not heard yet so mm -hmm. hopefully you know that will happen soon um i also uh i'm starting to do voiceover stuff uh nice. yeah uh, you did madagascar right yeah that's what i've been doing uh and that's still going so i I've, i'm recording on that almost almost every week which that's is super Amazing. fun so cool. um yeah that's that's basically what i'm working on what, what voice what are you doing for that one uh so i'm on this show called madagascar a little wild which is on hulu and peacock it is a prequel to the dreamworks madagascar film so nice. those <laughs> movies with chris rock aren't there like 75 madagascar things i now? think <laughs> i think there's three but they did they yeah. did a lot of them oh, yeah. um and th this well, show then, well yeah. then they did the what's it called penguins there's the spin-offs yeah, the spin yeah, the and all that. Yeah. king julian is one like as a oh, franchise yeah. i'm like yes. there's like it's as a franchise they've done very well like yeah. land before time was the war they just made 17 sequels <laughs> right but yeah madagascar there's just like a bunch of they just they're like let's make them have a movie yeah they get a movie and, totally yeah i mean you're in great company uh, sasha baron cohen was um yeah uh, king uh right the the, the monkey? king julian king julian yeah i think yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah um people. and so this show is about those animals but when they're kids so they're okay. the the animals are voiced by kid actors and then i play uh, a pigeon named anthony who's from long island who basically flies in each day to the Central Park Zoo where the kids are all at, and I basically say like, "Hey, there's a fire truck over on Fifth Avenue. You guys gotta check it out." And then <laughs> they, we all sort of go over to Fifth Avenue and look at the fire truck, and yeah. something happens. And then one of the kids will, you know, one of the animals will feel bad about themselves because they weren't included or something. I'll be like, <laughs> "Come on, stretch. You gotta just be proud of yourself. Your friends love you for who you are. You're gonna be fine." And then they say, "Yeah." And then they sing a song and they go back and go to sleep. And that's each episode. But it's super fun. Uh, I, I've been, they've been writing really great stuff for me. My character gets to sing in some episodes that are going to be coming up soon. Hell yeah. So, uh, it's been, I've really, really, uh, so loved that. this is very fitting because Steven played a pigeon like one he time did. and now you're playing a pigeon in an ongoing successful <laughs> thing. Which is <laughs> swear I, 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 I this even is was so, the pigeon in Stork. This is so shitty, but I did just get nominated for an Emmy for that. Oh, actually. look at that! Yeah, <laughs> come on! 
God. I got, I got, uh, I got nominated for a daytime Emmy for best mm-hmm. performer in a preschool uh, production. I, I lost crap. to uh, to uh, Luke Skywalker to Mark Hamill. Oh. What, what did he That's do for? He did a voice on uh, Elena of Avalor, which is a Disney Junior show. Oh yeah. Well, if Dude. you're gonna lose yeah. someone, that, yeah, I, I felt, I Jedi. felt okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Emmy nominated this Eric is, Peterson. This is true. Now this it's now true. it's Emmy nominated. That's I guess that's, so. that's the new title. I that's guess yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. You were so good in Storks though. Oh, you yeah. stop that. <laughs> no, right but it's now. true. It is true. You were spectacular. My kids and I have watched it many, many times. It's wow. that business is so weird because like it's an anime movie. Storks made like two hundred seventy five million dollars. Like uh, to me, I'm like that's a huge success. And they're just like animated. Nah, if you didn't get to half billion, we're not making another one. I was like, how is that it's crazy? Yeah. Like, how are the numbers so big for those be- animated movies? I think it's Crazy. because it costs so much to make them, and mm-hmm. to, you know, f- yeah. four or five years to make them, and that's a lot of money to make it. So yeah, if you're not- yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, Stephen the- wasn't nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> The McDonald's Canada did do a pigeon toady Happy Meal. So there you go. That's true. Pretty that close. is true. How is your McDonald's bathroom going? Is my it's, real question. You know what? It's almost complete. Okay, good. The only thing I'm waiting for right now is I want the Ray Kroc plaque that goes in every McDonald's. Nice. Oh, yeah. I want that big bronze plaque. Can I, su- a, can I suggest something? Yes, please, anything. I feel like you should put a mirror above the the toilet so that when men are standing and peeing, the mirror has an employee of the month, and then so they Ooh. see their face in the employee of the oh, month yeah. while they're peeing. Oh, really? Okay. That you know, like good. you get those things that like in New Jersey, like, yeah. you know. I sure. like that. That's a that's Stop. a good idea. Like, I just picked up a McDonald's sign uh, that goes above the sink. That's nice. huge. I mean, it's six feet long. <laughs> yeah, and it's a big, thick, thick plastic. It just says yeah, yeah. McDonald's with the, the from from the front of the, one of the stores. When I saw so, somebody said they sell chicken nugget hand soap. Yes, chicken nugget so get hand some soap of that. has to happen. Oh, I that's do that. great. But I think um, you should get a Chef Speedy, which was the old original mascot pre Ronald McDonald that they still have oh, at the old. Yeah. McDonald's and Downey, the, the, speedy the, the oldest remaining. Wow. Uh, it's the sixth, sixth McDonald's ever built. This is the one I used to go to as a kid. But um, The one on Sunset was... Oh, back fun. in 1947 <laughs> when you were a kid? Well, the funny thing is, that McDonald's <laughs> is so old... We used to go down to the store. <laughs> like, McDonald's. It still lists 500 million burgers sold or whatever. It was right. like, a, like a number that at the time was astonishing, and now it's just like billion, billions billions or whatever. Ago, but yeah. 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 Yeah, because Mc- that was the sixth McDonald's ever built. The McDonald's on Sunset had the Speedy logo <laughs> up until about like eight yeah. years ago. <laughs> they still have the yeah. sign there in Downey. Like it's Chef Speedy. Do you Neon. love McDonald's? Like, do you actually my mom, frequent my McDonald's? My mom worked at McDonald's for most of my childhood. <laughs> uh-huh. So um, I I wanted to do the guest bathroom in my place mm-hmm. as like theme it for a restaurant because I just thought that'd be funny and yeah. weird. And so I was either going to go Taco Bell. Oh. I found a Taco Bell f- giant like sign. Yeah, that was I mean like you know three feet by four feet, yeah, yeah. fucking massive. Uh, lights up the whole bit, and it was like a hundred and maybe hundred and twenty bucks or mm-hmm. something like this Ooh. from like a burnt down Taco Bell. <laughs> and then the same guy also had the the, the light up uh, M no. from the front of right. a McDonald's yeah. in Inglewood, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll sell this to you for like hundred bucks." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Done, I'll do that." And then I paint got got the room the perfect red, bright red, yeah. you know, yeah. the ceiling everything. Yeah. And then uh, and then the piece. The resistance <laughs> was uh, the the McDonald's that my mom worked at when I was growing up. I reached out to them and I was like, "Look, I'm doing a fucking McDonald's bathroom. Right. <laughs> my mom worked there for a million years. What can you give me? Do you have?" Anything weird, any statue, any yeah. you know, like an old um, drive-through sign, anything yeah. that I could put in the thing, and they were like, um, you know, <laughs> weirdly enough, in nineteen, it was like eighty-seven, somewhere around there, um, McDonald's sent us a Ronald McDonald head for the helium <laughs> tank. Yeah, yes, the I remember those them up through yeah. the mouth. Yes, I remember goes, those. Uh, they go the day that we got it. Uh, when it arrived was the same day they banned helium balloons uh, to be given out at our McDonald's. <laughs> right. So it went back in the box and went into a closet and they go, I think we still have it. If you want it, never been touched, never been used. And they, If you they, want it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's sitting on my counter. Did you have to me. pay for it or no, did they just no, give they it just to you? Gave it oh, to you should make that really into a hand soap dispenser. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what I really want to happen, if I could have one wish for you Please. in, in <laughs> life, it would be 
that you could get one of those Ronald McDonald sitting on the bench statues. Oh, that is yeah. next that's to the people. dream. Yeah. Dude, next to the toilet. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh that's the dream. I love I with love, the legs crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the big weird stuff. I do have a a, a, f- a big um Shrek and Donkey mm-hmm. in my kitchen. I got nice. a big yeah. statue of the two of them. You've nice. got the four foot tall pigeon toad or five foot I tall do. pigeon. I have toady. a five foot tall pigeon toady in my living nice. room. I have a silver cow in my kitchen, a full yeah. size cow. <laughs> and then uh but the the thing that I'm currently building with the help I'm gonna say this on the podcast, uh with the help of Chris Bartlett. Uh, from the Mandalorian is working with me on it right now is a John Wick style weapons cabinet Ooh. Uh, <laughs> with with a full cache of guns that are all fake. They're all fake guns, but like Nerf different... guns or like no looking no, like they real. Look, they yeah. look like real guns and sure. samurai so, swords and all sorts of things. So when the police get called to your house at yeah. some point yes. for the McDonald's incident <laughs> that happened yeah. in your bathroom, so go, you're getting shot because they're going to see the weapon cache. No, no, the weapon cache fire. is sealed into the wall. There's a, it, there, it's all done to look like. But how that. are they going to know that? No, look, yeah. they're yeah. not going to be able to. Know. You got to put those little orange. He's tips reaching. On yeah. We should cut this out of the show. Probably. <laughs> 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 the one edit from yeah. the show. <laughs> Don't tell people that I have a secret weapon <laughs> cache of home. fake weapons. A weapons yeah. cache of fake weapons. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a bad choice. Um, too late. <laughs> too, anyways, um, where can people get you? I, I can talk to you all day, Peter said. Sure. Peterson! <laughs> where, where, can people, where can people get you on the internet? Uh, you can uh, follow me on Instagram, at Eric Pete, E-R-I-C-P-E-T-E. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Eric Peterson 44 And you can follow my fashion into Instagram, which is mm-hmm. at The Portly Gentleman. All one Wait, word. Oh, what? At The Portly Gentleman. I'm a, a big uh, fashion guy. I love clothes. I love uh, <laughs> buying clothes, putting clothes on myself and other people. Yeah, some stuff for the big sure. and tall gentleman. That is room? sort of the idea. I, Do you have anything that would fit me? Uh, I'm not selling clothes. I'm more like showing outfits that I like to wear. Nice. And, and that would the, look good the on. <laughs> idea is eventually with it, I want to get to a place where I'm sort of doing like videos where I'm explaining like, why does this outfit work? Why does this mm-hmm. outfit not work? And trying to show that guys who are not model skinny can still dress very cool and it also doesn't have to be from places like you know armani and gucci you can go to old navy and target and get stuff that looks cool and it's just Mm -hmm. about putting the right things together and how to do that and so i like uh, to show the guys who are model skinny don't have to dress cool they can wear (laughs) fake star trek shirts that's right that's right there's a place for everybody i like the shirt that you're wearing right now where'd you get this from uh this is from a company called sheen Sheen? Oh, I've heard Sheen? of that one. People yeah. on TikTok keep talking yeah, about it. A lot of people on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly girls who are into yeah. it now. I think it's a Chinese brand. It's yeah. all extremely cheap. I think this shirt was probably $5. Nice. Um, nice. And it's... Uh, it's a nice the, sort of it's like like not, floral plant. Yeah, it's a little print. floral yeah. pattern. Uh, it's the... I like... I've just recently started ordering from them, but they have good stuff. It's like cheap quality stuff, but... Yeah. Uh, but you but can inexpensive. Get, yeah. And looks good enough for yeah, that. Yeah, looks cool. And you've got the cool hat. I do. it. This hat I actually got uh, at a Housing Works, which is a uh, thrift store in New York City. Mm-hmm. And it is a Barney's hat. So it's oh. actually a very expensive like hat vintage. at one point. Uh, but I got it for like $5. I love everything about everything <laughs> about you. I love everything about you. <laughs> I just want I, I I love the whole thing everything yeah. that's happening here. Thanks, man. We're gonna have to do something together besides would, a podcast. I would adore that. Yeah. Guys and dolls. That's what I say. Yes. <laughs> something like that. There. All right. You are awesome, Mike Black. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, all social media at Mike Black is back. Yes. Mike Black is back. Yeah. Did you go? <laughs> a lot of. Uh, oh no! I changed it because it was Mike Black attack and. I was started getting a lot of the wrong kind of fans. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is not, yeah. this this is not what I'm that. aiming no, for. No, no. Readjust, readjust. It's the wrong time in the <laughs> yeah. world for that to be. Yeah, know. I was like, nope. <laughs> Nope. No. Um, what about you, Mr. Waka? Where can people find you? Uh, links to everything at funnymat.com or Stephen, you can send me a message at mattwalkersucks.com. Yes, <laughs> you do suck. And people do do that. They yeah, send real thing. horrible. Oh, well, I got some more things to put on there, too. Oh, God. Uh, you can always get me at Stephen Glickman, S T E P H E N Glickman on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And then, uh, uh, blah, you can get uh, the, the, the TikTok as Stephen K. Glickman. Uh, the, the new album, uh, The Moving Company, is 
is out now on Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, so go check that out and um, go to the nighttime show.com, which will lead you to uh, listening to our podcast absolutely everywhere. Buying our merch. Yeah, you bet. So thanks again, uh, Eric. You're, uh, you're fantastic, dude. You're the best. I'm thanks, so happy man. for you. This was great chatting with you. Yeah, you Talk bet. About what we're talking. There you go. Oh. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, Matt Walker. <laughs> it didn't record. Really, get us no, out, Matt. Get it us recorded. Out. I was trying to play the closing mu- music, but I'm going to do that. Play, no, play the ruined it, Matt. Well, now this it. other commercial has to play the whole way through. I don't know how to stop oh. it. Oh. There's probably a way to stop it. Technical wizard. I don't know how to. Let me see. Did Matt Walker, this stop technical it? wizard. Yeah. Matt Walker. Yeah. We're all proud of Matt Walker. Pause? <laughs> he does wait, wait, I paused it. Hold on, button. let's see. It's changing the let's things. go, and now we're going to go to B. Uh-huh. Oh, there, there we, we go! go. Yeah! yeah. All right. <laughs>